<laughs> Maybe see one of the videos of one of our lamp Bible studies had to uh, redo some parts of it. But anyway, <laughs> let's continue to read Jeremiah chapter 33, uh, Promise of Restoration. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses and or houses in the city and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege rams and the, and the sword in the fight with the Babylonians. They will be filled with the dead bodies of the men I will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from the city because of all its wickedness. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I will bring Judah and Israel back from captivity and will rebuild them as they were before. I will cleanse them from all the sin they have committed against me and will forgive all their sins of rebellion against me. Then the city will bring me renown, joy, praise, and honor before all nations on, the earth, on earth that hear of all the good things I do for it. And they will be in awe and will tremble at the abundant prosperity and peace I provide for it. Take note of all of this. <clears throat> all of it. Because <clears throat> it's not just talking about um, the return from the exile. We'll con let's continue to read. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says. You say about this place, it is a desolate waste without men or animals. Yet in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, they are deserted, inhabited by neither men nor animals. There will be heard, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good, his love endures forever. For I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says in this place, desolate and without men or animals. In all its towns, there will again be pastures for shepherds to rest their flocks. In the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills, and of the Negev, in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem, and in the towns of Judah, flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them, says the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the gracious promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will make a righteous branch, righteous branch, sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteousness. For this is what the Lord says, David will never fail to have a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor will the priests who are Levites ever fail to have a man to stand before me continually to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to present sacrifices. The word of the Lord came to, Drew, to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. If you, if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that day and night no longer come at their appointed time, then my covenant with David, my servant, and my covenant with the Levites, who are priests ministering before me, can be broken, and David will no longer have a descendant to reign on his throne. I will make the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites who minister before me as countless as the stars of the sky and as measureless as the sand on the seashore." The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. You have not noticed that these people are saying, the Lord has rejected the two kingdoms he chose. So they despise my people and no longer regard them as a nation. This is what the Lord says. If I have not established my covenant with day and night in the fixed laws of heaven and earth, then I will reject the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant, and will not choose one of his sons to rule over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will restore their fortunes and have compassion on them. So there is so much here. Once again, this is a prophecy 
not only from the return of exile, but he's talking about also the future future. <clears throat> and he's also talking about Jesus. Okay, he's saying right here, in those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. And in those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteousness. And so the Lord is already telling Jeremiah right here that he is not only going to create this new covenant, but he's going to fulfill the new covenant. <laughs> he's going to remember the other covenants man has broken <laughs> over and over and over again. This time the Lord's like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. Amen. And all. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fulfill it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, and it's just going to be the best thing. Because this is the way it's, it has to be done. Because I love them so much. I love you so much. That is what the Lord says over and over and over again. He sees you. He hears you. He understands you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And that is bringing past to present as well. Um, and he goes on so much here. There's so much here. And he's telling, he's giving, so he's telling Jeremiah this. He's giving hope to the people as well. And he is showing, providing, you know, through that purchase, through everything that's going on, that his will will be done. And what he wants for the people is prosperity. And he is talking about that prosperity. He's saying, all this is short-lived. But what, what I have in store is eternal. Before we go on, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? <clears throat> there is a lot, lot here. Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. His love endures forever. It does. It still does. And it will for all eternity. He loves each and every one of us. <clears throat> and so, also looking at this, we also see that um, he's telling Jeremiah, yeah, things are happening right now, because these are the consequences. I'm with you, though. I'm with you right now, and I will continue to be with you. And we'll see all the different things that happens to Jeremiah. So, yes, the people who are in the city right now, they're not repenting still. They're not wanting to follow in the Lord, so they're mistreating Jeremiah. Jeremiah has been killed. Lord is protecting Jeremiah, even in prison. He's like, don't worry, it's a short time. Because the king of Babylon, he's coming. He's already here. He's getting, be, be ready. <laughs> be ready. So we need to be, we need to be ready too. When the Lord is calling us, when the Lord is talking to us, when the Holy Spirit is wanting to utilize us, we can be ready too. And again, if you have any questions, concerns, give it, ask the Lord. Say, I hear what you're saying, Lord, but How? How, do, how am I going to do this? How am I going to accomplish this? I need you to be my guide. I need you to speak through me. I need you to be here for me. I need you to be the good shepherd. Before we go on, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think?